six, six is solving <coughs> radical equations, okay? So the first thing you want to do, it's basically a three-step process. The first thing you want to do is isolate the radical on one side. So if there's other things being added or subtracted or multiplied to it, we want to get rid of those and isolate just the radical. And then we will want to um, raise each side of the equation to the same power. So like if you're taking the square roots, then you're going to raise it to the, what power? Square. Squared. And if I'm taking the cube root, then I'm going to raise it to the cube. So that it will cancel out. So you're going to raise each side to that power. And then we're going to solve. And then we have to check our solutions because the thing is, we can get extraneous solutions. Do you know what that means? We've That's done it before. What's an extraneous solution? Not a really big solution. Long. What did you say? Long. Not a long, no. An extraneous solution. So when we get solutions in this, you might get more than one. And if we get more than one, it doesn't mean that all of them work. Because what can I not have inside of a, a regular radical? A negative, like inside of a radical that has an even power, yes? So if I get an answer and then it makes it negative on the inside, it's an extraneous solution, meaning it doesn't actually work. Okay, so let's look at this problem. I have the cube root of 2x plus 7 equals 3. First off, is my radical um, isolated to one side by yes. itself? Yes. So then what's the next step? Uh, raise. raise it to the power. What power am I raising both sides to? Third. Because it's the cube root, so I'm raising it to the third. This then eliminates itself, correct? And you get 2x plus 7 equals 3 cubed. What is 3 cubed? 27. 27. So I get 2x plus 7 equals 27. Now how do I solve for x from there? Subtract 7 from both sides. I get 2x equals 20. Divide by 2 and x equals 10. Now we need to check the solution. Meaning I'm going to plug it back into this original equation and check. So, I have the cube root of 2 times 10 plus 7 equals 3. What is 2 times 10? 20. And so I have 20 plus 7, the cube root of 20 plus 7 equals 3. What is the cube root of 27? 3. 3. So 3 equals 3. That solution is correct. So you are always going to plug back in and check your solutions for me. Understood? Okay, that means you're going to have a lot of work that you are going to show me on your papers tonight. Word problem. In a hurricane, the mean sustained wind velocity, V, in meters per second is given by the formula. V of P equals 6.3 radical 1013 minus P, where P is the air pressure in millibars. At the center of the hurricane, estimate the air pressure at the center of the hurricane when the mean sustained veloc wind velocity is 54.5 meters per second. Where am I plugging in 54.5 meters on that equation? <coughs> the one? VP, yes. So I'm going to say 54.5 equals 6.3. The square root of 1013 minus P. Now, what do I need to do first to solve this? What do you need to do first to solve this? Isolate. Isolate. So how do I isolate that radical? Square. Nope. No, not first step. What's with six? Yeah, 6.3. What do I do with 6.3, Jackie? Divide by it. Divide by the 6.3 so that I can isolate this radical equals, so 54.5 divided by 6.3 gives me um, 8.65. Now, what do I do, L? Square it. Square it. Square both sides. Okay, square this, square this. This cancels, it eliminates itself, and you get 1013 minus P equals, and what is 8.65 squared? 
Now, what do I do? Yep. Subtract 1,013. Subtract 1,013 from both sides. Minus 1,013. And you get negative 938.18 when I round. Equals negative P. Now what? Divide by negative 1. P equals 9. 38.18. And I would check by plugging that back in to see if it worked. Okay. Um, so your air pressure at the center of the hurricane is about 938 millibars. Oh, my gosh. Okay, millibars. Don't forget to put units of measure when you're dealing with word problems or whatever it is that you're dealing with. Oops. I don't think this will erase the way It is, but we're going to see how it gets that way. <laughs> okay. 4x to the 2 thirds, okay, equals 36. Now, is there a radical in this? No. Not currently. There kind of is. What could I do with 2 thirds? You could change it into a radical, yes? But I don't need to do that. What I want to do is isolate x by itself. So what would my first step be if I have 4x to the 2 thirds equals 36? Do what? Divide by 4. Divide both sides by 4. So you get x to the 2 thirds equals, and what is 36 divided by 4? Yes, ma'am. 9. Now, that power is 2 thirds. How can I get rid of that power? Yes, raise it to the 3 over 2. If I just raise it by the reciprocal, it will cancel that out. Okay, because then it will give me x to the first because it will be 3 times 2, which is 6 on top, and 3 times 2, which is 6 on bottom. Okay, so I'm going to raise this to the 3 seconds. So I didn't change it into radical form because it's easier to work this way right now. Does that make sense? So then I get x equals 9 to the 3 seconds. This is where I want to change it into radical form. Thanks, Lauren. Because what does 3 seconds actually represent? The square root of 9 cubed. This is where I want to change it. So I get x equals the square root of 9 cubed. Yes? What's the square root of 9? Okay, there's two answers when you take a square root. Plus or minus 3, right? And then what is plus or minus 3 cubed? You would get x equals plus or minus 27. Now, this is where you'll have extraneous solutions possibly. This is what I mean. If I put positive 27 in here, okay, 4 times 27 to the 2 thirds equals 36. What's the cube root of 27? Because that's what 2 thirds is. What's the cube root of 27? Three. And what's 3 squared? Nine, nine. And 9 times 4 is? 36. Okay. Now, what happens when I put negative 27 in there? What's the cube root of negative 27? And what's negative 3 squared? 9. nine. nine. And 9 times 4 is? So in this case, both of them worked. Does that make sense? Okay, so my answer is plus or minus 27. But you have to check both answers because they won't always work. The reason it worked is because I took the cube root of a negative and squared it, which gave me a positive. If I had taken the cube root of a negative and then cubed it, or... Um, took it to the fifth power, it wouldn't give me a positive, correct? Okay, so that's where you're going to run into extraneous solutions. Let's solve another one. I just gave a lot of practice today, okay? So lots of examples. x plus 2 to the 3 fourths minus 1 equals 7. What do I need to do first? Add 1. I want to get that by itself. So add 1 to both sides, and I get x plus 2 to the 3 fourths equals 8. 
Now what do I do? How do you get rid of that power three-fourths? Well, raise it to the four over three. So I'm raising it to four over three on both sides. We have to be fair and equal, okay? So these give you a power of one. So you get x plus two equals eight to the four thirds. What do you do from there? Cube root and the fourths. Good, Kaden, good. So x plus two equals the cube root of eight to the fourth power. What is the cube root of eight? Two. Two. Is there only one answer with a cube root or is there two? Just one, good. Two to the fourth. What is two to the fourth? Sixteen. Yep, sixteen. So I get sixteen. And I have x plus two equals sixteen. Now what? Subtract two and x equals fourteen. And then we would plug this back in and we would check. Okay, so when I plug it in, I have fourteen plus two to the three fourths minus one equals seven. So fourteen plus two is sixteen, yes, to the three fourths. Minus 1 equals 7, which means I'm taking the fourth root of 16 and I'm cubing it, subtracting 1, and it should give me 7. What's the fourth root of 16? 2. 2, because 16 is uh, 4 and 4, and 4 breaks down into 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay. So I get 2 cubed minus 1 equals 7. What's 2 cubed? 8, and 8 minus 1 equals 7. Boom. Show me that you've checked it. More examples. I'm all about examples today. X plus 1 equals the square root of 7x plus 15. First step, is your uh, radical or your power <coughs> isolated? Yes. So how do I get rid of the power or the radical? Square both sides. Now, when I do that, I get this. 7x plus 15 equals. What happens Boiled. when I square that? You have to do what, Katie? Boiled. Yes, I have two sets of this, which means I have to foil. What is x times x? And x times 1. And x times 1 gives me 2x, and 1 times 1 gives me 1. Now, what do you think I need to do to solve this from here? What would you suggest we do? Okay, take the 7x over. Okay, if I subtract 7x from both sides, I get x squared minus 5x plus 1 equals 15. Team. What else do you think I need to do? Uh -uh. Think about things we've done all year. What do we usually subtract, one. subtract what? One. Nope, not one. I want to get this set equal to what number? Zero. To zero. Oh, subtract so subtract 15. Good, Eddie x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals 0. How do you solve for x from here? What do you have to do? Completing the square. Um, you could do it with that if you wanted to. Or I could do some... I could see if it... What is this called when we do that? Uh, the opposite of boiling. Factor it. I could factor it out. 7 and 2. 2 and 7, because and 7 negative times negative. 2 is 14. Negative 7 positive 2. And if I have negative 7 and I add it to 2, I get negative 5. So x equals 7 or negative 2. Here's where you get extraneous solutions. These both might not work. I've got to check both of them. So I'm going to go back to the original and check it. Okay? The original said x plus 1 equals radical 7x plus 15, correct? I'm going to start with 7. If I say 7 plus 1 equals 7 times 7 plus Grady 15. Grady Bossy, please return to the cafeteria. What's 7 times Grady 7? Grady Bossy to the cafeteria. It's what? 
49. What's 49 plus 15? 64. What's the square root of 64? 8. Okay, 8. So that works out, yes? Let's try 2, negative 2 in there. If I have negative 2 plus 1 equals radical 7 times negative 2 plus 15. Negative 2 and 1 is negative 1, yes? What's 7 times negative 2? and plus 15, so then I get negative 1 equals radical 1. What's the square root of 1? 1, so is that correct? No, so this does not work. This is my only actual solution because it's an extraneous solution, okay? It means that it can't possibly equal that. I think I have one more example. Okay, one more thing. This has radicals on both sides. I'm going to erase this the first one and start here. Okay. This has radicals on both sides. So we got to talk about what that looks like. If I have the square root of x plus 2 plus 1 equals the square root of 3 minus x. Now, What's our first step supposed to be? Isolate the radical. Can you isolate a radical when there's one on each side? No. no. One is isolated, but the other is not, correct? Okay. So what do you want to do, Kaden? Take the square root of everything. Not take the or square. no, square everything. Okay, so let's square this, but here's the deal. When I square this, do you see how this has a plus one with it? That means I have to foil that. Oh, never mind. I don't like this. Kaden, you're right in what you're saying. It's just I, so I, I have this. Um, that just cancels. Yes. So I can leave it as three minus x. Okay. Now, when I foil, what happens when you multiply a radical by a radical? It gets rid of it. It gets rid of it, right? So you just get x plus 2, okay, because the radicals cancel out, so x plus 2. What happens when I multiply a radical times 1? What am I going to get? Radical x plus 2. And I do that twice, so how many of those do I have? So I get plus 2 radical x plus 2, like that, yes? Okay, and what happens when you multiply 1 and 1 together? You get 1, okay? So now I have this. Now, isolate the radical. Okay? So what am I going to do to isolate the radical? Add the two and one. Okay, you want to add two and one? So I have x plus three plus two radical x plus two equals three minus x. Yes? And subtract. Subtract. X subtract an x and subtract a three. Okay, so then I get 2 radical x plus 2 equals, those cancel, yes? Negative 2x. Two. Two now what do I do? Divide by 2. Radical x plus 2 equals negative x. Now what do you do? Square, square it. Anytime you have a radical on both sides, you're going to end up squaring twice during the process. Okay? So square this and square this. This gives me x plus 2. What's negative x squared? What is negative x squared? x, x squared. squared. Now, what do you think I need to do? I'm going to subtract x. I'm going to subtract 2 so that I get it all set equal to 0. So if I subtract x and subtract 2 from both sides, I get 0 equals x squared minus x minus 2. What do you do from there? Factor. What multiplies to give me negative 2 adds to give me negative x? 1 and, one and, no, one negative, and one. negative 2. So then x equals negative 1 or 2. What do you have to do with those? Plug it back in. Plug them back in. To check. To check. These are the ones you're going to hate, I know. It's okay. So I have this. 
Okay, so plug it back in. Let's plug in negative 1 first. Negative 1 plus 2, the square root of that plus 1 equals 3 minus negative 1. What's negative 1 and 2 together? 1. 1, so the, what's the square root of 1? So I get 1 plus 1 equals, and what's the square root of 4? 2. So you get 2 equals 2. Boom. Negative 1 works. Now let's plug in 2. Square root of 2 plus 2 plus 1 on the outside equals square root of 3 minus 2. 2 and 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 1. And what's 3 minus 2? 1. Square root of 1 is 1. That is wrong. This is wrong. So the only actual solution is x equals negative 1. Because <laughs> it's an extraneous solution. That is what we are working on tonight.